uh, one of the council people and I've never been there because of COVID. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a weird thing having these <laughs> meetings again, right? Yeah. What? What is this? We don't do this anymore. <laughs> Um, where, where are you meeting them in the, in the city manager's office? 100 something. I don't have it in front of me, but it was, it looked like, is that enough? Yeah. So our, the whole address for, for the city, the main campus of city hall is 100 San Rose Avenue. That's it. Yes. But there's, you'll, you'll need to know what room you're going to. Oh, good to know. Okay. I will. <laughs> what's up? What's up there? I know. I thought this is kind of a you oh, probably um, you're probably going to meet them at uh, the city manager's office because they have their own offices there, workrooms there. Um, so if you go, to, it's on the second floor um, of City Hall campus, like proper, and you'll see council chambers is like the biggest thing you'll see with a, a title on it. And just to the left of that, right by the elevator, that's okay. where the city manager's office is. Oh, excellent. Thank you. I think excellent. it's room 10. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Anne, and don't forget to check out too, because you were going in there. One of the art pieces are the one of the installations alterations that we approved is there, and that's going to be. Okay. Oh yeah. Yes. Is it? Yeah, is nothing's, it nothing's there yet. No. Not yet. Okay. But no. yeah. Right. Check the be check the before. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'll check the empty space. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. The, well, I did hear recording is started. Mm -hmm. okay did. Yeah. um well Kristen you are you are um free to begin the meeting if you'd like or if you'd like to wait we do have our artists waiting um to be promoted for their presentation so if you're listening um VJ we will get to your item um shortly after we start the meeting thanks for your patience great I'm gonna give uh one more minute for any of our other members to join and then we'll start the meeting soon. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the November 7th meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54953E and the recommendation of the Health Officer of Sonoma County, Art and Public Places Committee members will be participating in this meeting via Zoom webinar. Members of the public can participate in the meeting via Zoom or by dialing a uh, toll-free number and entering in the webinar number. Lonnie, will you please uh, let our members of the public know any other ways to participate? Yes, I can. Um, so if you're a member of the public participating, you can select the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. If you're calling in, you can press star nine. Great, thanks. Like to move on to roll call. Lonnie, if you would be able to take a roll call of all of our Art and Public Places members. Yes, I can. Um, can I ask when you guys do it, do I call out each of your names or? Yes. That is okay. typically how we do it. Okay. with me. Uh, board member Baumgartner. Present. Uh, board member Puentes. I'm here. Present. Uh, Vice Chair Jones Carter. Present. Chair Kiefer. Present. Let the record reflect that all members are present with the exception of board member Asdarian, board member Nathanson, and board member Sayers. Thank you. Item three, public comments. 
This is the time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Lonnie, do we have uh, any public comments waiting? We do not have any at this time. No phone messages nor emails, great. I will then move on to item four, approval of minutes. This afternoon, we have two draft minutes to approve. Uh, Tara, will you remind me, do these need to be different um, votes or can I, or can we vote in one for two? Um, let's see, I believe they need to be separate because there were different a selection of members present. So if you could call them into vote, please. Great, okay. First off, we have the draft minutes from October 3rd, 2022. Uh, members of our committee have received a draft of these in an email. Are there any corrections or um, comments made about these draft minutes at this time for the October 3rd meeting? Seeing none, I'd like to move towards a vote. Uh, would anyone like? I move that we um, approve the minutes as written for October 3rd. Can I get a second? I second that. Great, thanks. Uh, Lonnie, we would like to take a vote. If you uh, Typically we've just raised our hands on these votes if that's um, agreeable with you. <laughs> I can't vote. Oh, oh sorry. So uh, I think we have a quorum. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, we don't have a quorum for that one. Um, Vice Chair Jones Carter, you weren't there for the October right. 3rd meeting. Right. Um, and we do have a few people who were not here for the October 13th meeting. Um, so I don't think that we will have a quorum for that either. We, can I um, just double check? Is I think you can abstain. But you still have a quorum. The quorum remains. Is this correct, uh, Tara? No, we, we would have to have four votes to pass the um, oh, right. pass the minutes. So we're going to have to table both minutes until the next meeting. Okay. And will these need to be tabled until the next regular scheduled meeting, or could these go on to the next special meeting? Um. I'm not sure exactly. Typically, we put them on to the next regular meeting. That is correct. Okay. Well, then we will return to these at our uh, December Art and Public Places meeting. Great. Moving on to scheduled items. Item 5.1 is the community mural at Dutch Floor Park. Artist VA. Karisan will present a proposal for a self-funded community mural on privately owned fences that face Dutch Floor Park in Northwest Santa Rosa. The property owners have provided permission and the Parks Department has approved the location for temporary artwork with no obligation to maintain the artwork. Our committee's recommended action today is approval of artwork design. I will now pass the uh, torch over to Tara and to welcome our artist. Great, thank you so much, uh, Kristen. And um, I'll turn this over to the artist in just a moment. Um, just wanna provide a little bit of context that the committee um, often receives items like this to approve when it's a project that's privately funded um, or sometimes has other sources of city funding, but not through the public art program. Um, or when the project is on city property. And so in this case, it's kind of a little bit of a hybrid. Um, it, the, the property itself are privately owned fences, but the artwork imagery faces a city park. And so um, we um, reached out to the parks department. They've approved this location for a project. Um, and the artist has already obtained property owner permission from the fence owners. And so um, he's here today to just share what the project would be. Um, he had 
a short proposal that was attached to this agenda, which we can share um, to review uh, today. So I'll turn it over to you, PJ. So this fence in this park had issues with <clears throat> like vandalism and graffiti. And I like frequently saw a lot of graffiti that's been had to be constantly painted over. And I think adding some kind of artwork to that fence would help prevent this vandalism and help with the maintenance of how the fence looks. And I also wanted to make my mural have like a positive message instead of just like something to be aesthetically pleasing. And I chose to make the mural about a message of unity within the city of Santa Rosa, with like the people, how they've all come together, like different groups of people, different professions have all came together to help us with problems like all of the natural disasters and things that have been happening here. And I think that message is really strong and I think it would be a nice message to have in this park. And then the in the design, it shows alternating pictures of hands joined together to represent this unity. And then between each of these pictures, there's like a famous landmark in center of that to kind of convey that message of unity throughout the city. And then the general area of the fence is about eight feet by 112 feet. And it stretches across the fences of three houses in that area. Mm. I think that's all for the design. Great, thank you, Vijay. Would you walk us through a little bit of um, your plan for how it would be painted, where you're getting the paint, any plans for maintenance and um, any, other, any other information you think would be helpful for the committee? For the paint, I'm gonna get it at a local Sherwin-Williams store. And they said that since it was a community project, they would give paint for either a reduced price or for free. But in general, the cost of the mural would be about two to $300, depending on if, I would need to do a second coat. And for one coat, it would be $40 per gallon and about three and a half gallons, which would be about $150. And then for two coats, it would be about 300. And then for maintenance, I know a organization that I could get like a sealant that's made for murals that I could put on top of it. And that may be for free too, but I haven't like, thought about maintenance right now. So I've just been focusing on budget for just like the paint and the brushes and rollers and other equipment for the actual painting of the mural. 
Okay, thank you so much. If there's anything else you'd like to add, please chime in um, and I'll turn it back over to the chair um, so she can facilitate any questions from the committee. Great, so um, for our committee's discussion, first off we have questions, then we will take public comment then we will have discussion and then voting. So order of operations. Uh, first off, are there any questions for our artist Vijay and uh, um, Tara or our city of Santa Rosa staff? Tara, or sorry, Lisa. Yes, hi. Hi Vijay, I have a couple questions for you. Is this a collaborative project or is it just you're behind this, you had this idea? and it's just you uh, um, being the project manager on this, this um, mural. Um, that's one of my questions. And my, then my other question is, I know I, when I was looking at the location, I can see it from, I, I think that's White Chapel, that one road, uh, but then there's another main road too that's larger. Can you see it from there? Because I know it is pretty, it's, it's in the back. Um, of the park. Um, I think that park's a couple of acres and that's in the very back. So I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but I think since it's gonna, it looks like you have really colorful um, colors that you're wanting to use. Um, so I'm assuming that you can. And then also too, I was wondering, are if since you're getting some of this paint, are you also looking for donations of paint too from um, just from the public? So for the people that are painting the mural, it will, I was planning on just doing it like a project on my own. And then I might get help from people just for like priming the fences or like basic things like that. But the majority of the actual painting is just I'm planning on it just being me. And then for the paint donations, I wasn't planning on like asking for public donations because since the Sherwin Williams said they would help get like free or reduced cost paint, I was just planning on getting everything from there. Okay, thank you. Oh, and then I'll, also, I'm sorry, really quick, I don't know if you're finishing, I'm interrupting or not. Um, just, I was wondering how well you would be able to see it from the other, I think, what was that, the road? Because I know it's like, if you drive down that white chapel, you can really see that area, it's very visible. Um, but um, I'm just wondering from the other streets and stuff, but if it just, because it looks like what you have there too is just going to really brighten the area up. And um, it just it looks, I think it's going to look really nice and um, it's going to be colorful and visible from definitely from Whitechapel. I was just wondering about the other main road. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be visible from that road too, because only like about a half of it is covered by some trees, but most of it would be visible from both roads. Okay, great, thank you. I have a couple of questions. I uh, wanted to understand um, your connection with this park. Uh, had neighbors living here reached out to Art Start or the, um, sorry, I know you were a, a lead artist with the, or a junior lead artist with the Monarch Project. Um, had anyone in the neighborhood reached out to the Monarch Project about this site or 
was this um, something that you had come up with? This was just my own project, like not related to any of those organizations. That's fantastic. I think that the idea of proposing a mural to um, beautify a fence where there had previously been vandalism um, is a very good use of space and a very, um, I, I commend your design for being uh, focused on unity. Um, thanks for proposing something that is so bright and to um, enhance this area. So hopefully there won't be as much vandalism here. Thank you. Uh, seeing no more questions from our committee. Uh, I would like to ask if there are any public comments received for this item or anyone uh, in our meeting wishing to give public comment. Chair Kiefer, there are no hands raised um, and there were no emails or voicemails related to this item. Great. Going back to our committee, was there any further discussion that you would like to weigh in on before um, we move to a vote? Um, a motion should be on the table before oh. discussion. Thanks. Can I ask oh. a question? Is it too late for me to ask a question? I just, I, find no. it, I just pulled up the image. I, I didn't, I'm looking at the image before, um, before the proposed mural. I'm just, um, how many panels is it? I see this is a really long fence. So I just wondered, is there an end point to it? Or are you just painting into the very um, bushes? Or, you know, like how many panels BJ are there? I, I know you showed something, but it's not up right now. So I don't know if this was example of some or you, it was gonna be bigger. So you proposing ending right in those two spots. Oh, thanks, that's helpful. It's bigger than what I have here. Great. There, there was about, I think, 12 yeah. panels. Oh, great. Okay. Excellent. And this is all older wood. Is that what it is? Is the, the fence pretty old? Yeah. Yeah. I just wondered, it seems like that makes it sort of um, porous. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Right, so I'm taking more paint. So I just didn't know if you had experience painting on old um, porous wood. Do you have, and I know there's lots of different kinds of surfaces to paint murals on. Are you familiar with painting um, on wood? I did a small mural in my own backyard to test how paint works on wood and I think it'll be helpful because I found that when I paint on wood it takes less coats because the paint like holds like the wood holds the paint better ah, and it dries faster right super yes all right um the last question was um have any was there any interface with the neighbors about this or is just the parks has the has the jurisdiction just to okay it and obviously the person owns the fence but it's not a fence that faces their house so just was curious has there been any reach out to the neighborhood are they aware of this um, yeah before I sent this project to the parks department I me, I got the help of my dad to create my permission slips that we wrote up and then gave to the three people who the fence, whose property the fence takes up and they all okayed it and liked the idea. Fantastic. Like that is just very forward thinking. Excellent. I just want, I just was thinking about all the different kind of layers of this. Super, good work. Thank you. I had one more question. 
Uh, Vijay, what do you expect as the uh, timeline or, or how many days do you expect that it will take to paint this mural? I think it could be done by the end of the year because right now this month I have a lot of college classes so it'll be a little slower this month but in after like early December I'll my semester will be done so I'll have a lot of free time to like spend a lot of time each day on the mural in December so I think it could be quick during that time. Great. All right, seeing that we have already uh, gone through step for public comment, I would like to see if any committee member would like to if we could get a motion on the table so we can continue our discussion. Uh, our Make a motion that we um, move forward with the project as proposed. I second, so I'm Great, the language in our agenda is uh, approval of artwork design. Is that agreeable to your um, to your motion, Melanie? Yes. Okay. Mine too. Okay. Second. Okay. Great. Thank you, Lonnie. I would like to take a roll call vote. Uh, board member Bumgarner. Aye. Board member Puentes? Aye. Vice Chair Jones Carter? Aye. Chair Kiefer? Aye. Okay, so this passes with four eyes. Thank you for your presentation, VJ. We look forward to seeing your mural um, go up in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the approval. Tara, don't we have to discuss it and then go on to do? Yeah, I, I feel <clears throat> it went very quickly from the motion to the vote. If there was further discussion, you, you can always join oh. in, uh, chime in. Yeah, usually you make a motion and then add any comments or discussion. I'm good. <laughs> I have one I have one just one question. Is it is it can I ask a question now? Technically we've moved on to okay. the next All right. item right. now. All right. All right. That's fine. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um we will now be moving on to item 5.2 program and project updates. Thanks, BJ. Okay. Hi, BJ. Um, okay, great. So for this item, I'm going to turn it over to Jessica to give most of our updates. Thanks, Tara. Um, okay, so I've just got a couple updates for everybody. Um, with Unum, we broke ground um, in Courthouse Square last Monday on Halloween. Um, and we are on track to, um, fingers crossed, have it finished by the end of the year. So um, if all goes accordingly, and we're, we're, once we get the dedication ceremony in order, we'll be sending out that information to the APPC. Um, we've got Art Surround is still kind of, um, we're still plugging away at Art Surround. We're waiting for the artist contracts to be approved. And uh, as soon as there's any new steps with any of those projects, we will keep APPC members posted. For our rotating art exhibits, we've still got two up at, at the Finley Community Center and the Person Senior Wing. 
Those are up through the end of the month. At the Finley Center, we've got the Artist Workshop of Sonoma County. And at the Person Senior Wing, we have the California Native Creations by the Pomo Project. Um, I am also working with the National Arts Program to do a couple of special awards because this year we're going to be celebrating our 20th anniversary. Um, that's the coming up show at the Finley Center. For our citywide art audit, Tara and I have now met with all of the task forces individually. So our next step is that we're taking all of your really fantastic suggestions and we're going to relaying them to our GIS team. So we're starting to work on editing that online form and we'll get back to you all with that. And that's all I've got for project updates. Um, Tara, should I do a, some of the department updates? Not till we get to that item. So oh, just got it. Hold, okay. hold off on those. Thank you so much, Jessica. Sure. We can answer any questions though on those updates now before we move on, if there are any. I do have a question. So um, the dedication for the UNUM project, um, how far out should we start? How long ago should we have started working on this? <laughs> That's a tricky uh, <laughs> balance because we do, while we do want to plan ahead for it, we don't want to plan it and have the project take longer mm. than anticipated. So um, I will say that the artist is planning to uh, leave town mid-December. So if it's looking like the project is going to run past the 10th of December, then we're, we're going to push the dedication ceremony into January. Mm -hmm. So I guess I didn't really answer your question. Um, I think once we have a firm uh, finish line in view, then we will then we'll have a date for the dedication ceremony. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, after next week, I think we should have a better sense of that given there are certain milestones we should be reaching with the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, construction. And so if we're meeting all of those milestones, then I think we'll have a better idea that we'll be able to meet um, the rest of the project timeline. And um, so hopefully expect an email from us maybe by midweek next week, and we can try to get working on planning. And we do have a budget, right? We do have a, a budget. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, I know this wasn't um, planned or anything, but we do have some photos we could share of the installation site. Would that be exciting to anybody to see those? <laughs> mm -hmm. Photos are always good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. I Let thought, me... I the fence, the fence was exciting. Yeah, I... I know. Well, yeah, just seeing the fence, you're like, ooh, oh, something's thought... working. I know. Yeah. Okay, well, hold on one second. Let me get these open really quick and then I'll share my screen. Is is the sculpture finished? The sculpture is fabricated um, okay. and will be brought in, I think, in two pieces. But the site work that is being done now is all for the foundation work. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, the sculpture will be sitting on a, a four inch raised platform or pedestal to make it ADA compliant. And so the, the images you see here are the forms of the platforms for the footings. So this is its placement within the square. Mm. Wow. Gives a good idea for scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and let me skip to the next day <laughs> and see the daily progress. All of the pavers had to be taken out once they were marked because they'll have to be put back after they're cut, right? Oh. To match the, anyway, there's been a lot of, um, a lot of little details to work out. And then um, 
they're being very careful about protecting the rest of the pavers on site as they're digging and removing soil. And this is part of the artist's team or is this the city of Santa Rosa workers? It's a combination. Um, okay. the, the, the work that's been done, most of the work that's been done so far is the, the, um, the artist fabrication and installer team. It's a company out of San Francisco called Gizmo that the artist contra contract contracts with. Mm -hmm. um, however, our city construction crews have been and electricians have been assisting with getting electrical to the site and with removing pavers. Um, and they will also be doing the concrete pour. Uh, okay. Sounds good um, to know. Let's see. Let me show you just a few more that look a little bit more impressive. <laughs> I think the rebar ones are impressive. Oh, wow. So the concrete pour is going down a, a couple feet into the ground. Okay, here's the rebar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Very nice. I didn't realize how deep it had to, it had to start at. Yeah, for a sculpture that's what, 15 feet by 12 feet, um, but also, you know, is a undulate, you know, it doesn't move, but it's a natural form um, that creates an archway that you walk under. Uh, everything has to be very structurally sound mm -hmm. and um, all their plans have been reviewed and approved by a structural engineer and approved by the city. Mm -hmm. And how deep is that? They said four feet? Or is that what you... Oh, I said a couple feet. But it'll, okay, a couple feet. It'll, it'll be raised up above the pavers yeah. by four inches. Okay, that's right. You did. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, the rebar and the support has to be underground quite a bit. Mm -hmm. nice. Wow. The okay. Gizmo team leader said that it's, that, that it's like really overbuilt, essentially. So mm -hmm. that's, that's um, reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because the weight of the actual mm -hmm. sculpture is light since it's, ah, right. you know, aluminum or something. Yeah. Panels so, and all. Uh, thank cut. you. <laughs> Thanks for the construction for... photos. Uh, yeah, yeah I know. those are great. <laughs> those are exciting, <laughs> but I totally <laughs> love seeing those. <laughs> yeah. I had a question uh, regarding the online public art mapping. Mm. Uh, so you had mentioned that you had met with all sub subcommittees and are moving forward with the city's GIS team? Yeah, we have a full page of notes from all of the committees to, to make adjustments to the, to the form. Great. Uh, when you met with GIS, were you um, met with some of them being, uh, or sorry, were these items agreeable to GIS or did they have any questions or concerns about how to implement some of this or? I, I just wonder about our input. <laughs> we have yet to see how it will be received. We've just compiled everything. So our next step is to meet with them. Great. But I'm sure they'll be amenable to all of our suggestions. And we will be presenting once we have a, a new final draft of the way that the website will work and the way the information will be collected and displayed, we will be presenting it to the committee, the full committee. So um, you won't, you know, you won't, it won't be a surprise when it is finished. You'll know that we're getting ready to put it out there. It'll be presented back to the group. And then for my clarification, um, will this be a sub page under the Art and Public Places website on the city, or will it be a link to or um, the out there page? The audit form itself, the submission form, will live on the City of Santa Rosa's website in our art section, the public art pages, but we will have a link to that page on Out There Santa Rosa. Great. Thanks for the clarification. Great. Were there any other questions or comments from our committee on our project updates? 
<clears throat> Being none, I would like to move to item six, committee reports. Item 6.1 is our ad hoc task force reports and discussions. Would anyone like to make a, uh, or I'll just go down the list. Uh, is there an update from the diversity, equity, inclusion, and access task force? Yeah, Ann and I don't have an update. We did have the workshop that we did and we were getting, we had a really good discussion. And I, I feel that from that discussion, it definitely can, it is going to help us and create um, a path to, um, to which way we would like to just uh, go and how we would like, it basically, it told us what is important. And, um, and it really made me think that for me, I, I need to rethink a lot of things that um, I was originally um, had these ideas and stuff. And um, it actually was, it was really good. So it's going to give, I think, our little section definitely um, some better, uh, some better ground to play to just to, you know, some just, I don't, what am I trying to say here? It's just, I'm not making too much sense, but it's going to give us, I think, a lot better um, ideas and some just some just some ground that we're going to, um, which way we're going to go and what we'd like to do. And um, definitely hearing from the artists and what they had to say and their number one priorities and um, their number one issues that they had on presenting their art um, was, it's very important in how we structure um, the way we want to move forward. I'll just dive in and say I was not at that meeting, but I watched the entire thing on the video, oh. which was really great. I was really impressed with you all. Um, I mean, I am always impressed with you all, but the way yeah. you, the way you just engaged and really listened, and then just what came out of it naturally that you allowed to come out in the discussion, which was just some real, you know, self-reflective thought, and you know, reflecting on behalf of the institution of the city. And yeah, there was some exciting sort of ahas. I think I just kind of got to be a fly on the wall because I wasn't in the room, but um, yeah, it was great. Tara, especially your closing comments were super helpful. And I hope it leads yeah. to some more discussion. So I know it sounds vague if you weren't on that call, people listening, but um, it's great. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you guys for that recap. Uh, community engagement. Melanie, um, we heard you talk a little bit about the preparation for the dedication ceremony for UNAM. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, we have, I mean, we haven't really talked any more about it, but after our first little one uh, with the mural, it just made me think that, you know, we really need to get ahead of the game a little bit with our game plan about what we want to do. And um, I was actually on one of the mayor's calls and all the other board chairs were there and I reminded them that they were all invited. And nobody came. And <laughs> they said, don't stop though. They said, keep, keep inviting us and we'll try and get there. So um, anyway, um, it just, you know, we need to really make sure we get the community involved in this in a number of ways so that um, we get a good response and people know about what we're doing. Um, and then Jeff and I had a call with um, Kevin, I think that, yeah, um, with our committee and uh, that went really well as uh, probably yours did too or others did, um, which kind of keeps us a little centered and we're gonna do a few more, but yeah, it felt good. Great. And I'll remember to keep the dedication ceremony in the talking points for the next uh, mayor's boards and committee meeting. <laughs> uh, next we have project development. Um, 
our committee has not, or our task force has not met recently. Um, but we've, uh, it, last time we met, we enjoyed talking with Tara and uh, Jessica about the art audit um, map on the website. So I found that to be a very um, fruitful conversation and I'm looking forward to um, how we can kind of learn or glean some uh, ideas from that map about um, to better educate or describe our, our city's inventory of public art as we go forward and think about project development. So that's been a great talking point. All right, moving on to seven, department reports. This is time reserved for city staff to provide a briefing on issues of interest. No action will be taken on these matters except to possibly place on a particular agenda, or sorry, item for a future agenda for, <laughs> for consideration. Thanks, Kristen. Um, Jessica, I think you just had the one this time, and um, I don't have any others. Um, and Raisa, if you want to join in, you're welcome to add anything as well. Okay, so um, Tara and I wanted to let you know that the staff is working with the Economic Development Department um, to incorporate a free art component into an upcoming small business facade improvement program. So um, small businesses will be able to uh, add, add some sort of art component to their facade improvement if they would like. And we are contracting with both Art Start and Rough Edge Collective, which is MJ and Joshua, um, to, to manage those individual sites and projects. So it's not quite in the works yet, but it's just at the beginning. And it's pretty exciting. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. I don't think we have anything else to add um, that's separate from that. I'll just add to that item that um, um, the you know the purpose the purpose of the program is to support um, small businesses in Santa Rosa who have been affected by COVID, um, and it, the funding is coming from the America. <laughs> Rescue Plan Act funds that the city received, um, a small amount of those funds. And so the program will include a grant component where businesses can apply um, for a grant to help them do or pay for um, facade improvements, such as painting, lighting, signage, awnings, things like that. Um, and then there's also an opportunity for a site to request a public art installation, most, most likely a mural, maybe some other type like a mosaic um, would be a better fit. Uh, and then we will pair that business with either Art Start or the mural project to do a, a, a public art project on that, on that site. Um, and so we're working really closely with MJ and Joshua to identify possible locations that, that um, would be good opportunity sites for murals or other public art. The other component of the, of the program is to support the build out of permanent parklets. So downtown especially had many temporary parklets during the COVID um, kind of shutdown timeframe. Um, but now the city has a, a permanent mural, a permanent parklet program. And so the funds um, can also be um, given out in grants to businesses who need help doing a permanent parklet. Um, and art can be a part of those projects as well. So having the public art program partner with this program really, really helps, I think, get more art out there. It's great for placemaking and it really helps um, uh, with hiring local artists as well. So um, the program and we'll have more information on when that um, is going to be completely up and running. What's... Um... Am I muted? No. Uh, what's the dollar amount, or how does do you know yet? Um, For like the amount of the grant? Yeah. Yeah. So um, right now it is it's proposed to not have necessarily a cap, um, mm -hmm. but to be. Uh, kind of um, appropriate for the size of the business and their need and um, appropriate for the size of the project they want to do. And so it'll be kind of, what we'll say is that most grants will range in the like 75% of your total project cost range. Mm -hmm. um, 
um, but we're not, but there will be a, a certain selection criteria that will determine um, how much they, that they will be able to be eligible for. And is the Art and Public Places Committee reviewing the art that, or no? No, these are not considered permanent projects. Um, and they, I mean, the, the murals are on private property. They are technically city funded, but they're grant funded. Well, it's it's a separate source of funding. It's not public art funding. I think the way that we would propose handling it is having um, all of the art projects be shown to the committee so you're aware of what's being done, but I don't believe we'll be setting up approval processes for all of them. And I just wanna jump in and clarify that the art component will be free to the business owners. Mm -hmm. But the facade improvements, um, we are not, Art and Public Places is not involved in any of that. Is that what I'm understanding? Okay. Unless it's art. Right. Okay. Yeah. And even in that case, I mean, the art projects in don't, the, the, the type of art projects and the type of funding that they're receiving technically don't trigger the, the requirement for the committee to approve them. So mm -hmm. it's really more a matter of us making sure you know what what we're doing. It is a part of what we're spending our time on. It's a part of the public art program's efforts. So we want you to be um, in the loop about it and to share the projects that will be happening. Tara, I had a, a question about this scope. Um, and what time in a project do you see them applying for this type of improvement um, grant? Um, well, we're structuring it so that it will be retroactive back to July 2022. So the, if, a pro, if a business has already done a project um, since July 2022, then they would be eligible to submit that project to receive reimbursement for essentially. Um, and that the time frame we're proposing for grants moving forward, there's we're looking at the two phases. Phase one um, would be uh, potentially starting as soon as we can get the applications up and running um, through, I think we said July of 2023. And then to have, is that is that right? Right, so I don't have my notes in front of me. If you remember something else, please chime in. Um, and then to have phase two be after that, but there is a time limit on when the funds have to be um, uh, kind of allocated to a project and when they have to be fully spent to meet the federal guidelines. So there are certain um, requirements for that that we have to adhere to. I just thought of something. At one point we talked about doing something, you know, downtown like, coordinating benches, trash cans, and that kind of stuff. Is that kind of this stuff that will be going on as well with this with this funding or it's not, not up to no up to the owners. Okay. I mean yeah, I yeah. think what what the what falls with within the definition of facade improvements really is is restricted to the business front itself. Mm. So it's paint signage, it can be landscaping, um, exterior lighting, security systems, awnings and canopies, windows, doors, um, parklet build outs, obviously. Um, so not necessarily adjacent street furniture, but um, mm. but I think that like, like if it's a parklet, then that is somewhat related. So I think that there is an opportunity to to look at how that all fits together. Mm -hmm. I have a question too. It, Tara, is this just for um, downtown or is this all of Santa Rosa that this is yeah. all of Santa Rosa's opportunity? So um, phase one is, um, so there's, there's phase one and phase two, which are slightly different areas of Santa Rosa, but, but both, areas were identified through looking at our um, qualified census tract areas, our opportunity zones, and 
um, are equity priority areas. So we kind of took an overlay over that and then also looked at commercial corridors um, and then identified these areas. So essentially it's in Roseland, it's a Sebastopol Road, um, sorry, yeah, Sebastopol Road corridor. Um, it's Santa Rosa Avenue and Petaluma Hill Road corridor, commercial corridors and then downtown, including Railroad Square commercial areas. Those are all phase one. And then phase two expands certain areas and also includes a um, section up in North uh, West Santa Rosa. So like Piner Road, um, industrial, um, th those types of areas. So um, I, I, I would be happy to bring back a map and more information on it at a future meeting um, with more details. We just wanted to make sure we mentioned this during um, department reports so that uh, it was um, on your radar. Yeah, definitely. And then another question Great. I had on this too, sorry, Anne, <laughs> okay. yeah. um, was, so when we have phase one and then phase two comes is just, just phase two. So let's say phase one takes us um, advantage of, if most, not all of the funds. And is there a certain a portion that's set aside just for phase two or um, how does the funds work when it Right. Yeah. Right now we're just looking at phase two um, if there's funding available. OK, good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, my question was just um, curiosity about we have you have the artists, um, MJ and Joshua, the Rough Edge and then the um, Art Start. Is there any targeted um, crafts, not crafts, um, fabricator type people to do the other kind of stuff? Are they are they helping out other? local businesses to do the other kinds of services they would supply for these businesses that want to improve? You know what I'm saying? Um, most so, I, I think so. So like a business who needs a new awning, would we be sourcing a sign right. company? Or carp or, carp you know, creative carpentry or anything like that, if people needed some sort of thing. I just wondered if we've targeted any other kinds of experiences besides paint to offer um, for people. For the art project, component of it. No, we focused on um, those two organizations and, and our, our, the services that they would be providing are essentially their project managers for the art project and they source and pay the artists through their contracts with us. So, um, so, so that's how that component of it works. If a business is wanting a grant to do improvements on their, their storefront on the facade itself, um, we are happy to be a resource to make sure they're getting connected to the types of services or providers that they need for their project. Um, some of the businesses we surveyed in, in planning this project have indicated that they already, you know, they don't need assistance in that area, but some may need assistance in that area. So it's hard, it, we, we wanna be as flexible as possible and make sure we're providing what is most helpful for Program. Yeah, that's what I meant. I was just more like kind of more an array and also just thinking about keeping the quality at a good place if people want to do creative things. Yeah, I love it. I'm just curious. Thanks. Tara, I would love to see a map um, with the area um, that phase one would be um, applicable for. Uh, if there will be a web page associated with this uh, grant, I would also love for our committee to be included on that. Um, yeah, there is already. So what I'll do is I'll send, um, when Jessica sends out, which is awesome that she does this, the updates on things that we've um, shared today, uh, we'll include a link to that website so you can take a look and there is a link to the map on that website. Great, thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Jessica and Tara, for going over committee or committee reports, sorry, department reports for us today. Uh, we have future agenda items as an item on our agenda. Are there any members who would like to suggest an item be placed on a future agenda? Seeing none. Um, I would like to keep this conversation going, so feel free to um, reach out between meetings and we can see 
about expanding our conversation. Um, but until then, our next regular scheduled meeting of Art and Public Places Committee is Monday, December 2022. Uh, thank you everyone for participating today and um, have a great afternoon. Wait. Oh. What date? Yeah. December 5th. Okay. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And just also keep an eye out for emails from Kimzen Creative, Nico, um, or most likely Kevin on scheduling the next workshops. Okay. Um, they will be special meetings held in November and December. And can we say a thank you to Eileen? She probably won't be here next time. <laughs> thank, thank you. Eileen. Thank you, Eileen. No. No. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Eileen. Thanks. Thank you all and have happy holidays and a good new year. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be missed. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Right. Bye. 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 Okay, and thank you, Lonnie. And um, yep. we appreciate you too. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>